and welcome to today's show. Now, have you heard of a technique called EFT? Or some people may know it as tapping, some people may know it as emotional freedom techniques, but it's that technique that some people think is a little bit silly, and it's about tapping on your meridian points. And in theory, this um, is, is a technique that can help you with anxiety. Um, Sharon King uses it in her birth uh, process. Carl Dawson uses it for matrix reimprinting. And it all started a long time ago with the founder, who is um, Gary Craig. And if you want to find out more about EFT, I suggest you visit EmoFree, which is www.emofree.com, where you will find a vast information all for free on how EFT can help you. And if you, if you know anything about TED Talks, recently there was a conversation on there with Petter Stapleton, who has been involved with research with EFT for 10 to 15 years now. And what that research it suggests is EFT is not just about stimulating the acupuncture points by tapping on them, but actually it can change, change your DNA expression. And we'll talk shortly as well about the findings of Bruce Lipton, who supports um, this information too. But it can reduce your stress and it can reduce um, that stress hormone cortisol, which also impacts on the DNA expression. But the most interesting thing that I find is that it can also change your brain pathways. Now, how amazing is that? for something as simple as just tapping on your meridians or your acupressure points. So I'd like to introduce you to somebody today who has worked particularly hard in the field of EFT and she has an extraordinary reason to do so because she has a son who has been diagnosed with autism. So please welcome Shamika Faulkner to the show. Hello. Hello, Paula. How are you? I'm really well. Well, I'm still getting over my cold and I don't want to talk about the mind-body connection about that because it's been hanging around a little while. And I know that you are aware of the mind-body connection. But today, what I'd really, really love to talk to you about is your passion. How did you become so involved with EFT and what impact has that had on your own experience with your son who was diagnosed with autism? Okay, <clears throat> thanks for uh, inviting me to this show. Um, so uh, before talk about EFT, I'm going to just tell a little bit about my background and my um, how I, um, my journey with my son and autism. Please do. Um, so um, I will, I'm a nutritionist for many, many, many years. And, um, you know, this is, I also work for children um, and adults. When my son was diagnosed, um, he, he was three years old. His behavior was changing and everything. So as a nutritionist, I tried my best and then um, tried different modalities like kinesiology. That helped a lot as well. And so, yeah, he was improving um, hugely. But when I introduced EFT, and actually when um, I worked um, on me, um, you know, through EFT, I found huge shifting in my body. And when it was happening in my body, my son was like, uh, keep saying that, mommy, uh, you are changing. I didn't, I didn't tell him that, you know, what I'm doing or anything, but he could feel it. So what uh, with autism, it's, he, he didn't only suffer with autism itself, like sensory issues, like um, triggering things, anxiety. He had other issues like hay fever. Summer was becoming really, really nightmare for us. And then he was having a lot of nose bleeding and some other traumas which was triggering on and off and i couldn't understand that why this is happening and how can i help him 
uh, I told you that I took so many training from so many different modalities and tried a lot of things, but particular few things, I couldn't help him. So then I started to work on these uh, trauma and the emotions and uh, not, not necessarily on him, on me, but I could see the change in him. And his hay fever is almost disappeared. His nose bleeding was, it was like three to four times a day. Oh my goodness. Pouring, uh, that gave him huge anxiety huge huge anxiety it was like when he when he was even asleep you know it, it the no no nose was bleeding so huge anxiety always he was in that anxious moment that when the nose gonna bleed and we with VFT, we found kind of the reason why this triggered him when this is triggered him and it was beautiful that it reduced and reduced and reduced. So that is my journey with EFT. And I, I do offer, and the beauty is I was working a lot of on me, not necessarily on my son. Uh, and it all he, it, he also got benefit from that. So that exactly. Happened. Because when you can work on yourself, that makes what you reflect out to the world very much different and impacts everybody else around you. Do you agree with that? Absolutely, we all are one. We all are linked to each other emotions, what's happening to the world. And um, me, myself, I'm very sensitive and I got a lot of clients and of whatever happening in the world can trigger you, not necessarily in your life. So exactly. yeah, uh, you know, you the more you work. Great courage and commitment to your son and that ultimate love that you had for your son that was the passion behind you doing everything that you've done. I mean, I know that you had a scholarship and you've worked so hard in education to benefit your son, which shows that ultimate love that you have for your child and what you are prepared to do in, in order to help your child. And that is absolutely amazing. And you must give yourself great credit for that. Thank you. I think that um, there was a time came because I was, um, I, I mean, I was good in my study. I was good in my career and everything. And you know, it was more like the more is coming, I was getting more. But then every time I was coming home, I couldn't help my son. You know, he was in another world. I couldn't communicate with him. I couldn't understand his language. I couldn't. So one point I was like, there, I have to find out a way to help him. Yeah. There must be something. So yeah, there was a, it was a big, it was a big decision mm -hmm. when I'm going to be a mother or I'm going to be, uh, you know, a PhD, like a, I want a doctor in front of my name. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity I got, it was very rare, you know, very few people get it but I had to take this decision uh, prior to my son and I'm glad that I did it because that through that journey I learned so many different uh, complementary therapies I understood people's body more um, you know through different modalities and yeah I didn't get a <laughs> like um, doctor degree as a doctor Yes. But I got the uh, benefit that my son got better. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that is a much bigger gift than having letters in front of your name. You know, with the greatest respect, people with many letters before their name probably would never achieve what you've achieved with your son. So you must, must feel so proud of what you've done. Yeah, thank you And, so and I know that you're, you know, I sense that you are very, very modest. Um, but that's something that we'll work on sometime maybe because you are amazing and that your Thank passion you. has led to incredible results. Thank so you. I'd like you to talk a little bit, if you can, uh, what you believe autism is, why it's come around, because you talked about the, 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 the connection and the imbalances within the body that you believe creates autism, is yes. part of autism. Yeah, so when it's come to autism, um, as I said, I researched for many years um, and not only through my son, like when people saw the changes in my son, they brought their children to me. So um, I had the opportunity to work on many, many, many children. And what I found, I mean, we call it like disability or, um, you know, call these names and everything, but 
what I found. It's not visibility. It's like there are some imbalances. You know, our body is normally balanced. Like we feel our, when our we are balanced in our body. We don't feel our body. We just we don't we don't really feel it, do we? Until we cough, we don't feel that. Oh, I'm coughing. We are mm -hmm. just there, present. When it starts imbalance, then you feel different things. It could be aches, it could be pains, it could be different things are happening in your body. And that time, body is signaling you that I'm not right. Something is going wrong in me. Fix me. Yeah. So with um, with autism, what I found, these children they are malnourished. Now, when I'm saying malnourished, people might get shocked that we are giving them good food. Malnourished doesn't mean that you are giving them food and they are, um, they are having it everywhere in their body. Because yeah. when they're eating, it goes only into their gut, only into their gut system. And then it's going from one mouth to end of the other mouth, you know. By this, and then from gut wall, it absorbs everywhere in the body. Yes. Yeah. So if your gut is not working properly, if the lining is broken, if there is not enough microbiome, if you're not eating the right food, which is like now a lot of processed food, a lot of um, uh, food is coming from uh, genetically modified food. And all this food is affecting children and their gut system. Mm -hmm. And we talk hugely about these children have wheat intolerance, milk intolerance. That is not just it, milk, wheat, or, uh, sorry, wheat intolerance and milk, uh, dairy. That could be because we are overloading the system with this wheat gluten. You can find gluten everywhere. Yes. It's too much. It's hidden gluten, gluten in everywhere. And the milk they are giving is not really proper milk. It's like genetically modified processed milk we are sending to the children so the gut and when the gut is not working properly then it's affecting to the neuron system it's affecting to the sensory system because our neuron is getting it has a big job yeah. because it's called the, you know the nervous system it works between the it's the link between the body and the mind how we're gonna work together what the signal they are getting from outside or we are getting from outside and then giving it to the body and how body is functioning and sending it back to the brain. For autistic children, because this, this, because of this lacking, then as I said, they are malnourished. The gut is not having enough uh, nutrition that brain needs, that the nervous system needs to run. So that, that struggles. And what happens, we see that struggles uh, in their behavior. We see that struggles in their sensory issues. Like if the light, normally um, a body, our sensory system could should react beautifully with the light, but that light become an overload, a painful um, part of their system and they don't know how to react with that. So the whole thing is imbalance. And then when um, when we start balancing, each part, it could be the liver, it could be the gallbladder, it could be the gut health. And gradually and gradually, when the body starts to heal properly and the whole system becomes normal, body readjusts everything. And okay. we know that every seven years, we change from one person to another person. Yes. Everything in the body changes. So it's very much possible, depending on what you are eating, in the same time, what you are thinking now you can say a baby cannot think a boy a little child cannot think so where is coming from and there is coming from parent is coming from mom basically yes. how was the pregnancy how was the mom it's herself was a, when she was a child how she was was she a lonely child was she feeling discriminated was she, she did she have enough trauma that she couldn't share so that kind of things all are downloading in mom's system and the child is bring, is coming out with all these all these um trauma in the same time now we talk about um we talk about vaccination we talk about antibiotics and mm -hmm. yes that can that can affect but mm, 
all the, the question I had that is, it's not affecting all the children. Why certain amount of children are getting affected? And yes. that is because these children, their health or their mom's health were compromised before they were born or just after they were born. They didn't have enough uh, gut flora. Could, it could be microbiome. It could be um, other things, proper nutrition. Um, it could be um, mom had the kind of trauma which actually stopped that part of mom's body that function properly with this kind of nutrition and made mom isolated or made dad isolated. But for the next generation, when it comes to the children, it shows hugely. And again, there are um, mobile phone and all these smart devices. We are, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I had, I, I mean, myself, I did it. When I was busy, I just gave my phone, son um, phone <clears throat> and made him busy. But we didn't realize that no. this is actually affecting the brain function because our eyes is connected with our brain. Yeah, everything is learning. So when they're looking at the phone, they're shifting, <coughs> they're looking, their eyes is not blinking the much a uh, baby's eyes should be blinking. And that's affecting the brain function. And uh, another one is um, the walker. You would not believe how much this walker, you know, the we could well, children, a baby, the, a baby, the baby walker. walker to yes. walk. What the, the, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are cutting off the natural way. Why this is so important? because our when babies start to crawl they crawl right left right left means our right and left brain coordinate together mm -hmm. yes and is right and left coordination it has to coordinate right and left right and left and when baby crawl you can see they crawl like that and we are rushing them to walk proper walk early you know sometimes some babies takes for an example, two years to walk. That means that baby needs that time for the brain to coordinate, yeah, to make him ready to walk. But we are cutting it. We are giving him, give the babies to the walker. It means their brain, the coordination of this two part of the brain is not happening the way it should be. And that affects hugely as well. So there are a um, few things comes together and then it can cause autism which every children has some similarity but not the same yes. and that's why it comes like as an X spectrum people struggle and the doctors struggle because the root cause is not the same so when the root cause you find the root cause you can walk through it when okay. you are not finding the root cause you can't so for an example, the root cause is emotion and you are giving him the boy, uh, the child supplements or, or um, other things, that's not going to cure, or not cure, that's not going to help the child to get better. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how it works. Gosh, you, you've mentioned so many things there. So bit by bit, I'd like to un unpick some of it um, but one of the things that I've researched in the past is how the diagnosis of, in, of uh, autism has increased dramatically since the 1950s, which to me ties in with the age of the technological, technological revolution. Yes, technological revolution. And I also, I also say we are not cooking at home. The GI, G, um, genetically modified food is huge because what happens when we eat food? Uh, food? We don't realize that each food has their own gene. Wow. Yeah. So when we eat normal food, natural food, and um, the food goes and naturally our microbiome transfers it to our, um, our gene and then they kind of become one. And that helps to our body to grow together. For example, we eat... Um, we eat, for if we eat banana yeah and mm -hmm. a monkey is eat, monkey is eating banana it's the same banana is coming to our body and becoming like us with our intelligence body's intelligence and in monkey's body is going to that way so the food what's happening um if we give a monkey like a burger and everything monkey will become sick and same as us we don't realize that and we would not necessarily um, offer a monkey a burger 
Yeah. Yeah. Because we know that it's not good for them. Yeah. But for us, we are doing it. We are necess- and just genetic- genetically modified food has their own gene. And this gene going to our body and it's not, it's not changing to the cooking processes. And then day by day, our uh, microbiome is also getting smaller. So yeah. microbiome is the good bacteria. And this is as unique as us, like our facial expression, our fingerprints, like our, you know, it's our, it's, it's mine. Similar thing, our microbiome is ours. So the more they have it, the more is better. Yeah, and that's how the food is, the, the changing of food is huge. And the, again, you said technology, yes, because the mobile phone, the more you touch it, it's sucking all the, um, vit- especially the vitamin C from your body. You know? Okay, so yeah. in terms of food, I mean, medicine, uh, food is our medicine. There is no doubt about that. And of course, the gut is our second brain. So those, those two are absolutely connected, the food that we eat and the gut, that is the second brain. So for people listening now, what tips can you give them what small steps can they make today to start improving the microbiome in the gut and the quality of food that they're giving their children okay the first thing uh, my advice is to start cooking at home please 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 don't rely on the supermarket food because just read the amount of um, chemicals they put it in there yeah and our body is natural is is no difference than uh, we see any animal outside just because we are living inside the house doesn't mean we are different so, different so please start taking responsibility buy your vegetables buy your meat and then cook it at home so for meat um, i mean we do we do um, advice for um, organic but if you can't do organic then use like um, apple cedar vinegar and then soak it for 15 to 20 minutes and then and then cook it it's better and the pesticide they use so it's gonna remove all of these pesticides all of this because the, the animals has been injected with their own vaccination they are, they are using huge amount of antibiotics and everything so we need to be really really careful because the time um, there is a pattern when these children comes to see me that they are addicted with one food either they would be addicted with maybe chicken dippers or biscuits or yes. the whole day or rice you know and that's the, the you can you can see the pattern in there and parent give, feels helpless so take the little step just one step try to add one vegetables and then gradually and gradually and gradually it's not like you have to do it overnight but take the responsibility of all your own kitchen in your own health yeah what what i found shamika is the art of cooking um isn't really there anymore Although there are this massive influx of cooking programs on the television, it seems to me that people don't love to watch it, but don't practice it. And and the generations of people that are cooking, it's changing. You know, I I cook a full meal, or I used to, but now that I'm by myself, um, I have to cook for myself. Families are very busy. And they probably don't have the time to cook, or this is what they say, they don't have the time to cook fresh organic meals. Or, more importantly, they wouldn't know how to start cooking a meal from scratch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite common when parent comes to me. Uh, They're a busy parent, uh, especially mom. Um, They're busy and also they might be working or they might not be working, but they have a lot of other responsibilities or they are um, from, they are depressed themselves and just kind of lost the motivation. Yes. Um, so what I, I mean, for my, my big job is I'd like to empower because I was one of that mom. I wasn't, I'm now today, I'm, t- I'm sitting in front of you and talking about this autism, but I went through trauma, I went through um, nervous breakdown, I went through all this isolation, depression, everything, because our children is so a loved one, and we, when we can't help them, we feel, mm-hmm. we feel, um, we feel vulnerable, and then we start to excuse, like, this, 
I can't do this. I can't do this. Maybe because of that. And maybe doctor can help us. Maybe a yes. medication can help us. So I, my, um, my, I mean, my advice is to take, again, take the little responsibility. This is your health, your yes. children's health, and you can change it. Maybe before nobody can nobody nobody told you that through the food, through the changing your mind, um, you can actually change your children's body. You can change your body. Now you know because it. For me, the huge change I have seen in my son's um, life and then the other children, who are whose parent actually took the responsibility and started to cook a little little you know little steps. Yes. And don't go, don't go. Um, like you know, I have to cook uh, so many things just to simple even if we do just real things mm -hmm. like instead of buying grilling you're just putting things together and just putting in that oven and oven is working for you and then after a certain time you're just bringing it out so yes. it's just it's, it's just to changing our mindset and taking the responsibility of our kitchen I think yes. that's a huge step for us um, at the it moment, is. as a generation, the whole nation, the whole world has to do that. Yeah, and um, mom needs to be mom needs to be empowered and believe in themselves uh, mm -hmm. that we can do it. You know. So I, the, the word empower to me suggests that somebody's been disempowered, and they haven't been disempowered at all. They they always have that power inside them. Uh, to do what's right for themselves and for them for the children it's just about realization of that and by taking some of the small steps that you're suggesting that is powerful just these very small steps that you're suggesting can make a great difference to not just a child who has autism but to any child and that is the unique thing about this that everything you give your child like you explained earlier has got that gene in it that can really contribute towards them being well, or it can make them unwell. And we have to get about everything that's on the media that's good for you, that they say is good for you, because ultimately it's just a corporation trying to sell you their products. Absolutely. Um, yes, empower means, I didn't mean that they're disempowered. What I well, mean, no, I know, I know you didn't mean it in that sense, yeah, hasn't um, it? That, um, because of this, of what happening to our children, parent gets traumatized and they lose that power um, of themselves. That's yeah. what I was talking about. And then, yes, yeah. I get a uh, um, lot of uh, parents, like they are happy to give them the children crisps um, four mm -hmm. times a day. Gosh. The children likes it, but then when I ask them or request them or advise them to um, give some healthy food, for an example, even sweet potato, they would then ask me, "Is it not gonna um, affect my children's liver?" So that means because nobody advertised in the television in that way that um, a potato, sweet potato, is much better than crisps. They keep yes. showing us that crisps is good for our health. Crisp is a uh, food but crisp is not food you know i think it's, a, it's the most toxic product you can give to your children mm -hmm. because there's so much so much um, chemicals in that, that our body especially the children's little children's liver their gold yeah. liver, cannot function it and then the whole system becomes sluggish in the beginning and then whatever is going through it it's not functioning because now body is confused so uh, for me, like I did um, the few diets and, you know, things like that, which um, very simple. And if parents are happy, you know, they were happy to um, contact with me. I mean, I'm happy to guide them and advise them and start little steps, not a huge step, simple steps. So if someone wants to get in contact with you, how would they do that, Shamika? Okay, so I have a website called Angelic Healing with Shahmika dot co dot uk. I run a Facebook page called Angelic Healing, and I have email called Angelic Healing UK at gmail dot com. And myself, I have a Facebook page called Shahmika Agun. So there are hundreds of way, and uh, you know, it's just to first to I think fix the mind that I'm am I gonna be committed to make this change in my life and my child's life or not. It's commitment and 
that is very important. It is very important. You're absolutely right. And for those people listening, um, I will be putting the links to Shamika on the podcast and on the YouTube video. So don't worry about writing them down. Um, so <coughs> in terms of your own son, what sort of progress have you made with your son through changing his diet and addressing the emotional issues that you've had? And of course, by teaching him EFT. Okay. So um, my son had, I mean, let me just say, um, so first, I mean, he had huge speech delay. He was copying. Like if you could, if we say something, he was copying, but he didn't know the meaning of it. Uh, just some words then he had he, he had he was prior to infections I remember one year I had to give him antibiotics for nine times oh it was prior to infections he couldn't he, his um, uh, focus spectrum concentration spectrum was only 20 seconds hardly he could only sit down for 20 seconds and 20 and 24 hour he was on move couldn't sleep at night every one hour or one and a half hour he was waking up and he was roaming around um he couldn't wear clothes he couldn't you know anything with level um then any any a drop of water was in his body sound everything in this world was painful for him and he had huge anxiety and he had this issue also leaking, um, leaking everything, Gosh. and nose bleeding, um, hay fever. So he had huge, <clears throat> and then um, of course um, emotion itself because he couldn't express he, his feelings. So altogether, we had everything. And then since I, um, I, I started to do few, you know, research, and then I took a lot of training. And each from each training, I learned something different. I understood the body very differently. So with the changing the diet and then give the proper supplements was a big one. And then um, in the same time, then I realized that I was doing it for many years, but then it wasn't helping him for probably 50%. So then I understood, then I, I got uh, this training for like uh, cranial sacrum therapy, this kinesiology, yes. then, uh, like acupuncture points and what it, and then I realized that there are um, all these points in the body can be blocked or just not functioning properly. And the more I was activating, you know, the, lim the neuro lymphatic system yes. very sluggish for these children so when the more i started to work on all these things together and at the end when i um, understood eft the the the, the um, importance of this emotional trauma because a lot of things was with his um uh, like with vaccination with antibiotics a lot of things but then he, it was it, when i was doing all of these I could see like up to 70% he was getting better Then he was coming up like going down a little bit and then this a lot something else was coming and I couldn't f figure out what is actually happening then when I did this um, EFT visualization um, you know matrix re-imprinting re I did meta health and also I did Ayurveda combination of everything I think I now I understand health body much better way than i was before so when i put emotion in there not only his own emotion because i'm a very sensitive person and i worked i mean with huge traumatized people in my life so everything was i was like soaking everything in me and then then what happened in my life my you know everything was affecting this little boy and how that works if i talk it scientifically quickly how it works because what happened um when i'm um like i am thinking or i'm in a fight and flight mode yeah it's it's triggering this adrenal hormone in me all the time and i'm always like <gasps> that kind of that kind of position and these children since when it's like zero, actually when they're in a mom's womb from that age till they are six they are downloading everything from mom and dad and environment so 
so what they're learning they're downloading and their gene is downloading is mom's anxiety is mom's um that fight and flight mode is yes. mom's isolation everything so it's it's a program they are putting on their gene expression and then that gene is working through that way so when we start changing that and especially mom and dad and i'm still struggling to when i offer parent some parent um, they do agree most of the parents they say what she's saying focus focus we don't understand it just it doesn't make any sense he, he's a different boy i'm a different person just give him some pill if he get better better either you know yes or that you are not the best person that's how they say it and, but and, they don't understand the root cause if if they change then the child is changing because yes, the downloading system is changing yes and, yes and, and bruce little of course uh, yes. talks about this with epigenetics and um, yes. if anyone's not read his book the bio biology of belief yeah. it, it is really amazing to help you understand what you're talking about Definitely. and I, I would urge everybody to get that book because it is an eye-opener and and yes we are all don't have the same beliefs and if you believe uh, that this is the root cause and you think you can heal it by doing EFT or cranial work or all the other things that's good because you're right but if you don't believe it you're also right absolutely absolutely so it's yes. really important that you get behind what your belief is and how you can best help your child and your child needs your help whether yes. it be by changing the diet, uh, addressing your own emotional issues, addressing the emotional issues of the child. And children do take extremely well to tap in because it's, it's playful, it's interesting, it's silly, it makes them smile, it makes them laugh. So that's why it's a really, really good medium to introduce children to. And there's also the tapping teddy. You teach them by tapping on the teddy first and then they can tap on themselves. So there's many, many ways that you can introduce EFT to a child. And if it doesn't work for you, that's fine, try something else. But I have not not heard anybody who's worked with a child with EFT who said, well, it's not giving them any benefits whatsoever. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I've, started, I've started to um, go to schools, especially the special needs schools and talk to the parents. So. Um, especially what happens after um, the half term or after the term of school vacation, children have huge, huge meltdown, come back to school. And, oh, I didn't tell you that my son had huge meltdown every morning because he had separation anxiety and from me. So, and then again, I used EFT on him, it's like just before a week of the school six weeks holiday, uh, just six, just before six, seven days before the holiday um, is finishing, I have started and did work on him, and he's gone to school happily, no issues. But whether other children had issues, so I started. I've started to uh, teach parent and going to schools and talking because I found that um, the teachers and uh, need to be um, aware of what's happening as well because most of the time like these children stays most of the functioning time at school and then when they come home they're tired so i think the school has a big um, role to play here absolutely diet i you know they're doing amazing of course they are doing they're trying diff with different modalities but um in the same time i believe that if um, you are, if, if the if the food is not there, if the thought is not there, then other things is just like um, secondary object. The yeah. main thing is not there. The so other thing cannot help that much. So I think um, everybody need to be come forward and uh, the doctor because um, some like when I, I can share my story again with what happened with my doctor and um, regarding this journey with my son. So the doctor I was going to uh, for my son, um, the GP, and she was very reluctant to all these complementary 
uh, thing and she was like you are just wasting your time most of the time she was like and she's she was very straightforward just keep saying you know you are just doing all this rubbish aren't you things like that this year <laughs> this year because my son overcome every single issue as i told you that that he speaks he argues he um he's he he's he's doing karate he's doing piano he's doing football he's uh asking questions so it's a big big transformation and nose bleeding stopped hay fever stopped yeah. the other sense food sensitivity almost everything is gone it's like a different boy now so uh, the gp saw him um this august uh and we were actually um i can't remember where we went to but there was something just to i think a routine visit or something so and the gp asked him a few questions tested him and everything and she's like wow so she stood up and she hugged me this lady mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, I wrote in my Facebook. I was like, that's amazing. And the, the pediatrician also um, released him this year and said that uh, what you are doing is amazing. And they, both of them, they took my card that if any parent um, asks for any extra help, we can provide it. So, so GP and um, the mainstream doctor, they also need to see and come yes. forward because in their way of learning, it's nothing, no, nobody said that, um, there are how body works, how a mind works, you know, it's all work together. They just see as a part and a yeah. lot of health professionals, children are also having huge issue. And, and that is fantastic uh, acknowledgement to you. And just to make it clear, we're not saying that there is uh, no need of orthodox, oh. orthodox um, uh, approach, but they can both work. The holistic and orthodox can work hand in hand. Absolutely. Um, to get a much better result. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and your son is an absolutely brilliant example of that, and so are you. <laughs> Thank you. And I believe that these children, as I said, they're not, they're not disabled or anything. They're just imbalanced. So if we talk from Ayurveda's aspect, what we call, there are three types of constitution, like Vata, Pitta, Kappa. These children, we see as Vata, means they are like flying bird. They would love to, they're full of energy. And when it becomes imbalances, uh, then it becomes a bit like, they just don't know how to use it. So mm -hmm. that's how we see these children. So we don't see these children has got any disability, any other issues. We just see that they have imbalance and the time we help them to body get to get balanced, they can function properly. And that's such a nice way of saying it instead of labeling somebody as um, autistic or dyslexic or all the other yes. things that children get labeled with. It's so nice. To say it's an imbalance. Absolutely. And also when, um, again, through my experience, when the treatment, not the treatment, you know, the session and all the changing starts, uh, parents start giving them good food and the body is changing and then probably the emotions are coming out that was held for many years and again the school or somebody might think oh he's not getting better it's like getting worse but so we need to understand that children are children yes we not we should not uh, label them we should not make them like a robot we are not letting them explore the way they should be that's how my belief that um, if the child is having um, a, a, something emotional, we should let them cry or we should let them release it from the body rather than say, just sit down and don't do anything. You are not behaving like others. And that put huge burden on them and any children, but when they have autism and they, uh, they are not uh, functioning properly, imbalanced, you know, they're having some kind of imbalance, then they don't know how to function and they think oh my god something is really wrong with me and they take more burden and they get more down so things works like that i think the society has to be more open to accept these children yeah. and that child is looking to the parent for guidance isn't it mm -hmm. yes and it's not parents fault as well because when everybody say no to the child and then the way parents suddenly lose all these um social communication because nobody mm. wants you then you know so, so when someone comes to you 
for help. What sort of services do you provide and what can they expect? Okay, so um, again, at first, I, first two sessions I take to screen the child and the whole history and everything. And after two sessions, then we make a plan and it comes with the diet, it comes with the um, it's, it's the whole lifestyle. It comes with therapy, diet, if it needs a supplement, if it needs to change some um, education way, um, support at home, what parent can do at home, what, what parent can do for themselves and how can they uplift themselves. So it's a combination of parent and children together. And um, as I said, it's not only like a therapy or a diet, it's a lifestyle changing um, transformation program I'm running. Yeah. And yeah, and um, other things, uh, how to, the education, like the social stories and things like that. So everything is there. Um, depends on what child, what is child now, what is his need or her need now, and what little steps you can take, and how much time parent can give um, to these children. That's also crucial. It's very important because I mm. can just do one session, but then I give parent a lot of uh, resources that they can use at home. And if they don't apply all these at home, then nobody can do much. No, so. Absolutely, and this is a really important collaboration. It's not you doing everything for the parent and the child. It's you teaching the parent to help their child. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. I, I love the quote that you, um, that you have given me, and that is, never give up. You deserve the second, third, fourth, and many more opportunities to become you. Tell me about that. Why is it important to you? Well, I learned, I think from very um, like young age that don't give up somehow because I had so much things in my life <laughs> and I never gave up. I stood up and every time I took, um, the, I choose like, so, so I was suicidal also in my life because when, things didn't work for me and everything and very low. And I was like, okay, let's give it a go. Let's try one more time and yes. see what happens. And every time I gave myself one opportunity after that journey, it's a beautiful new experience came, beautiful new people came. So you are not just one experience in your life. You, we are here as a human being that we will have lots of different um, experiences and that through all these experiences we will become me you know or somebody will become them themselves so don't just one thing got wrong and don't give up because if you give up that's the end of the story if you fight for it in a beautiful way and just accept everything you will see the difference yes is that your quote Shamika? That's my quote. I, I, I never give up. I always write in my <laughs> Facebook everywhere. Don't give up and try one. Not If it's not two, if it's not three, if it's not hundred, just try. You will see the change. And it's amazing that you, you know, made that connection in that quote because in Petter Stapleton's TED Talk, she refers to EFT as the fourth generation of therapy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, will come more. it will come more because first thing you can do it at home you can um, use it at any time if I'm yes. feeling um, really really like I had a, recently I had an incident I was feeling so you know, like that and bef if it would be before I didn't know how to deal with it. and I'm sort of tap 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 I had a yes. therapy friend they helped me and swapped done sorted so it's amazing but with all the research that's now coming um around with the work that craig weiner has done and lena franks and stay uh, and petter um, this is being presented now to nice and they are really considering approving it uh, if they've not already uh, and it's it's working alongside therapies like EMDR that's been accredited by or approved by NICE. So it is amazing that after all the hard work that so many people have done with EFT, Absolutely. it's now becoming recognized nice, yes. for how useful it is. And it really is. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And I think every time um, there would be some creativity, there would be that, I mean, this world is not, it's a flow, it's like a flow of wave, you know, so it's yeah. not going to stop. Just because that something didn't come before or hasn't been recognized before doesn't mean that this is not the time to recognize it. So recognize it and then just work through it and see the changes. Mm -hmm. And it always works because EMDR, um, it probably 100 years ago, nobody knew about it. But exactly. now, you know, the research has been done and then people could see the difference and then accepted it. And again, now it's EFT. It's working and matrix reimprinting is working. So why not? You know, just I think um, the mainstream authority should accept and um, open to all kinds of different kind of um, modalities. So then just to see that, you know, what's happening, yes. why so many people are into it. <laughs> It is, and it's it's massive worldwide now, yeah. and uh, I love it. You know, I uh, I'm a trainer in it. I use it myself, and it's made a massive difference to my life. So I can certainly say, what have you got to lose by trying it? Absolutely. There's lots of free examples out there that people can go into YouTube and put EFT or tapping, and there's lots of people there willing to teach you for free just yeah. so you can experience it. Yeah. And I'm not saying don't come to people like you or don't come to people <laughs> like me, that's a different thing altogether. But just for the beginning, just to see how, how it works, go and try it free. Go to Emo uh, free site and get some history about it. There are real practical solutions out there that don't cost anything. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, YouTube is there now, so there are so many things that are happening. Yeah, just to look for research and this just... Yes, and, and unlike um, other modalities like hypnosis, you're talking about 3,000 for a, a course in hypnosis. Uh, EFT is literally um, a quarter of that price Yeah. to become a practitioner. So it's still very affordable for those who are out there and thinking, I'd really love to teach that. Great, come along, you know, ask us. We can train you. At, at very little expense. I, I train in hypnosis as well, and each one of them has got a part uh, to play. I love hypnosis, I'm not, I'm not disrespecting hypnosis, but it is very expensive compared to EFT. And we are energetic beings, and as such, we do need to get in balance with our energies. Uh, because without light, there's no dark. Without happiness, there's no sadness. Without pain we wouldn't know what pain was yes. we wouldn't know how to feel good so it's really important that we explore try to explore now every option and keep that passion going that you have because you are absolutely amazing oh thank you so much <laughs> no you truly are and, and you are so modest but yet you have studied so much and you are your potential is to help thousands and thousands of people if people would listen to you, and I'm sure they will listen to you and take something away from this interview. Yeah, I wish so, because um, first thing, uh, just, to, just to research first and just see that there's nothing, you're gonna lose nothing but exactly. trying, you know? You can just try and see what other people has to offer yeah. and see, you know? Um, just just talk and just open a little bit come out of that um, sadness yeah. you know that why this happened to me that's all we say why this happened yeah. to me so there are ways probably waiting for you uh, you just have to take a different way now and that's why probably it's happened to you like for me if my son wouldn't come to my life and this autism as i say um i always say that it, it we did transfer autism as a blessing now yeah uh, so yeah uh, because autistic children they have different pathway you know the brain works in a different way so when you can use it um so with the normal and that extra part of the brain is working together that's beautiful that's really create wonder in the universe Exactly. Well, thank you so much for being a guest speaker on the show, Shamika. You have been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Paula, for inviting me. And thanks all the viewers and lots of love and blessings. Thank, thank you. you.